okay so today we will see collections api in the apex okay and how okay. to use them what is what does it consist of okay okay so connection a collection is another type of data type okay in which uh, you don't deal with one single or uh, an, uh, a single data or single variable in this we have a collection or a group of data okay uh, so it's actually also called bulk api okay in this you deal with a bulk of data okay or more than one uh, data okay or more than one uh, variable okay group together okay like an array okay so just like that we have collections also okay so collection consist of three types of uh, data type one is a list okay one is a set and another is a map okay so list set and map okay list is an ordered group okay list is an ordered group okay so what does this mean ordered group that means that it is in certain order okay so whenever you create a group okay along with the data that you create let's say if you add certain five values into that list okay let's say you've add five numbers to the list so automatically an index will be assigned to those values that you add in the sequence of of your adding the numbers like the first value that you add it will be assigned as a index of zero okay the zero. second value that you add that will be assigned an index of one okay so so on so automatically an index is assigned so every time you like uh, print that print those uh, values it will come in a certain order okay because already index is assigned 0 1 2 3 4 so it will always be in that order okay, okay. so that is why list is called an ordered group okay 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 and in this it doesn't matter if you provide some duplicate values or or same values if you keep on adding it doesn't matter you can go and add it will allow you to add duplicates as well okay and list if you initiate if you initialize a list or if you uh, create a list okay in the beginning the size of the list is always zero okay and you cannot specify the size of the list while creating the list okay so as you keep on adding the number of uh, data inside the list its size keeps on increasing okay so it's very dynamic in nature so you can go ahead and add as many number of uh, values as you want and it automatically takes in let's say if you uh, if you retrieve some values from the from the database using soql okay so you don't know how many data if it uh, how many uh, how many uh, number of uh, data is there in that particular list because every time you uh, uh, do a SQL query it will always give you a result in a list okay so the okay. result that comes from the SOQL it always comes in form of list okay so that list if you create if you, if you just create a new list and assign those uh, uh, query result in that list automatically the list will take the size of that particular query okay Okay. okay so while defining you don't have to create or you don't have to provide the size of the list like how big uh, a list you want to create okay okay so that is the uh, main use of the list okay using list you can create a group of data and the data will be always ordered it will have index which is starting from zero and it can keep on you can keep on adding uh, value to the list and it will keep on increasing the size okay automatically okay so that is about list okay and what's a set set so just remember that here indexing okay so the main point is about indexing here okay so if you want to differentiate between list and set then the main point you have to remember is indexing how the indexing is done here the indexing is done automatically zero one two three 
okay all these indexes are provided to you as as you keep on increasing the size or you keep on adding members to the list it will keep on indexing so always the first element will always have zero the second element will always have one and hence and second third like that okay so as the indexing is there that is how it is always ordered okay it is always ordered in that 0 1 2 3 format okay but in case of set there is no indexing I mean so like uh, uh, explicitly it will not provide any index any any ordering to that list like 0 1 2 3 or that it will not provide okay in this indexing is done by the members itself so whatever value you add to that particular list so that that particular block or that particular memory location you will address using the name of that or the data member of that set itself okay what that actually means is that here the indexing is not provided like 0 1 2 3 all that indexing is not provided here okay that will not come automatically okay I think it's a uh, better you put, uh, you mute on your side so. okay 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 so in this what what is happening is that you don't have uh, the Salesforce or the compiler will not provide indexing uh, like explicit indexing so whatever indexing or whatever uh, let's say here the cells or the uh, group of data or the one single data you have to address using the index let's say uh, let's say the name of the list is LST so in that case if you want to address one particular block or one particular uh, box in which you have entered the data you can uh, use the index like one two three four five whatever index you want so it will point to the fourth box okay so to point to the fourth box you need to use the index here but in case of set you cannot do like that in case of set the data members using the members uh, of that particular set only you can index that or you can address that particular box so here no explicit indexing like 0 1 2 3 is not provided so whatever are the data members those members are the their uh, their uh, names as well okay so here no explicit indexing is provided so that is why uh, set is not ordered okay because here 0 1 2 3 is not provided it's not ordered so every time you do a system dot debug or display the list of or the uh, display the set it might come in a different order okay and as the indexing is done by the data members itself so here there are no duplicates allowed okay because let's say if you have a set okay if you have a set of uh, some string let's say you have one uh, and then another string is two then another string is let's say three okay this is your set okay here there's no indexing uh, numbers it is becoming a little confusing okay what i will do is i'll change it to let's say uh, a and here i'll put as b and here i'll add as c okay let's say we have a set of a b c so the name of this particular box is a itself and the name of this is b itself and the name of c itself so let's say if you add another uh, member here with the name of c then its name also becomes c only so that is why it is not allowed so you cannot add any duplicates inside the set okay it doesn't matter what type of data you are entering either integer or string or any s object you cannot add uh, the same value twice in the set okay because the indexing has to be unique okay here the indexing has to be unique every box has to have a different name 0 1 2 3 4 5 whatever it is so every box has to have a different name so similarly here also every box has to have a different name so the value is also a and if you want to address the first box or the second box or the third box you have to use the same value itself okay so that is why this has to be unique okay you know you cannot have two boxes with the same thing okay so that is why here duplicates are not allowed okay okay so that is what set is here there are no duplicates allowed 
so set is very widely used in order to avoid or in order to remove the duplicates as well let's say if you are retrieving any so any uh, list of data from the SQL query from the database and then let's say if you uh, uh, if that has some duplicate values or if 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 if, if it has some uh, repetitions then what people do is or maybe let's the ID is uh, repeated so they just put it in the set and the set all automatically removes the duplicates so set is very widely used to remove the duplicates as well okay because in set it is not allowed okay okay all right so that is all about set and then we have something called map okay in the map we have some we have a key value pair okay so we have a key value pair here also the indexing is not done by 0 1 2 3 and the boxes are not named like that automatically here the indexing is done based on keys so here there are two sets of values okay so this map looks like uh, let me show you this map will look something like this okay, it will have two tables okay it will have two tables one table will have key okay and one table will have pair sorry key value okay and it will be like these boxes okay so the key key is like just like a list okay it will be 0 1 2 3 all this so the key is a different set and value is a different set so each key is connected to the value okay so using the key you can address the value okay so using the key whatever key you provide you can address the value okay let's say if you for the keys you can put uh, any any data type like it could be integer string whatever it is okay let's say if you put uh, some keys here one two three like that you put some keys and then according to so for uh, for one you want to type something here <coughs> for two you add some values for three you add some values so there's one data type for key and there's one data type for value as well okay so it could be different as well here it you can add something like id okay it can have the id of the record and here you can have the whole record as well so here you can have some account let's say so here you have a uh, account value or the record of the account in the value you can have the name you can have uh, name and then let's say uh, then opportunity then in this you can also have uh, the other fields of the account let's say amount is there okay all those fields you can have of the account okay and in the key you can have the ID of the account so whatever unique ID is there that you can have okay so the key set has to be unique okay and the pair in the pair you can add duplicate values no problem okay but in the key as the indexing is done according to the key so the key has to be unique okay so whatever values you add in the key set that has to be unique okay so that is how a map is structured okay map is like uh, each key is connected to what value okay and both the keys as as well as value they have different data types and then uh, the the value will be represented by key if you want to get the value then you need to have the key so using the key you can get the value okay okay so in this all these three list set and map all these three are very widely used in case of triggers because all the triggers are uh, using bulk api okay so every time you create any code you have to handle bulk records okay so because you don't know maybe some some place uh, sometimes the uh, users will be adding data using data loader maybe if they uh, add like bulk uh, maybe 100 100 records they are adding at once so you should be able to handle all those records at once Okay, so to handle those records in bulk you need these APIs okay so 
that is why the collection uh, collection api is very very important okay 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 so that's all about list set and maps okay let's see how we can use the list and set and maps okay how to use them how to create them okay 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 first we'll see how to create a list okay let me just uh, delete all this let's open an anonymous window here okay. All right. So first, in order to create a list, you have to initialize the list. Okay. So just like declaring a variable, so you have to declare a list as well. Okay. So first, what you will do, you will put list. Okay. And then you have to add these two arrows here. One pointing left side, one pointing right side. And between these two arrows, you have to write the data type of the list. So here, what we will put here, we'll put data type. Okay. And then here you have to put the variable name so here you have to put variable name whatever the name of the list you want to create okay and here you put the data type of the list that you that you are trying to create okay so let's say like you want to create a list of uh, integers okay so you create a list so as of now in the beginning the, the box size will be zero okay it will not have anything inside Okay, so here you declare what is the data type. Like let's say we put integer here. Okay, so now this list can hold only the integer, just like a normal variable. Okay, here you can put only numbers. Okay. Okay, so we uh, we add what variable name. So this is the declaration of the list. So here you have declared one list. So you can declare one list. Okay, and whenever you want to use that list that you have to initialize the list. What will that list contain? Okay, or as of now if you don't if you don't know the values of that list you can just create a blank list Okay, so you can do where name whatever is the name of the list or You can add equals to and then you have to use new keyword Okay, so using the new keyword we will be creating the list Okay, so when we add new then you have to add list then again you have to repeat the same thing then you put the data in the same data type you have to put okay you have to add the same data type okay and then you have to use these brackets okay so now a new list is created with the size of the list as zero okay so now if you declare uh, let's say system dot debug and here if you put uh, where name dot uh, size then you will get a zero okay let's try it out with some let's say integer we have we have created a list of integers its name is uh, what we'll call it as int list okay and you can use int list equals to new uh, instead of data type again you have to put integer okay and here in the const in the parameters we'll leave it as blank then system dot debug we'll add as int list dot size okay now let's try to run this code and let's see what happens now if you execute the highlighted part okay so this code is run when we go to the developer console and we check out the logs so here the size is zero okay and if you want to print the whole list at once you don't have to uh, in arrays usually how you used to print in java we used to uh, do it uh, we, we used to put the whole array inside a uh, loop and we have to put uh, 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 display each each uh, value one by one so you don't have to uh, you don't need to do that here you, just, you can just do system.debug and inside this you can just add the name of the list automatically it will display in a list format so as of now if you display here so again the there will be nothing inside the list so when you debug it again 
okay when you go to the logs so here the list will not have anything okay so if you see here this is not zero this is actually brackets left bracket and right bracket okay so is one opening bracket is there and one closing bracket is there okay so this is what a blank list will look like okay so if you see here now if you can see it's a blank space okay one is opening bracket and yes. one is closing bracket. okay okay so this is and this is how you create a new list okay now let's say if you want to add some values to the list then how do you add some values so what you can do is just you can use a simple function which is called add okay so using add you can add more values inside the list okay and in order to address that list you have the name of the list so you use int list dot add and there you add the values let's say so here we have data type as integer so what we can do is we can add uh, some integers so let's say we add some 10 here okay so now if you do system dot debug and if you do int list then if you execute the highlighted thing then if you execute automatically this will be added and the size of the list will increase to one and uh, the member of the list is 10 okay here if you come back here so as of now there was no member in the beginning it was zero and now it's added to one okay so if you keep on adding members like this then you can uh, it'll its size is its size is dynamic depending on the members that you add its size size keeps on increasing okay so the more members you add the aut automatically its size will be incremented by one okay so it's all stretchable and it's dynamic okay so if you keep on adding some members here so it will be increasing you can add same values as well okay because indexing is already unique here indexing is done by 0 1 2 3 which is unique so every box has a unique name so that is not a problem so that's why duplicate is allowed because indexing doesn't depend on the on the values here so unlike in set in set the indexing depends on the values that you add it is indexed by the same values okay so each box is addressed by their values itself okay okay so that is why there is no duplicate allowed here the indexing is explicitly or uh, done by the apex okay which is 0 1 2 3 it's like that so here there is no issue with the duplicate so let's say here we add 20 here we can add it as 30 okay and here we can add it as 40 okay so as you keep on increasing its size will be keep on increasing okay execute the handle part now if you debug only so it will come here like this okay this is a very simple and very basic uh, list okay but we will mostly be using the list uh, with the records okay in along with SOQL okay so I've already introduced a little bit of SOQL so uh, let's say if you want to retrieve a list of records and if you want to add it in a list okay in that case how you do it so it's pretty simple okay how you actually do it you just create one list okay you create one list define the data type or define the type of records that this particular list is going to save let's say if it's going to save uh, opportunity so you write opportunity here okay you close this bracket you name the list so let's say we'll call it as op list okay and then you put equals to and in this bracket here you write the sql query you can directly write it like this or if you want you can also go ahead and create a new list here new list here you can reuse opportunity okay and then you close this bracket Let's see what happens if you don't know if you write something like this if you change the data type here okay now in this case it will it should throw in a compiler 
okay so illegal assignment from account to opportunity so you're trying to assign a opportunity uh, account list in an opportunity list because the declaration is part or the whatever the variable that you have created to hold that particular list that's of data type opportunity and the list you are throwing at it in the list you are asking it to uh, accept that is a, of a different data type that's of a account data type okay so you cannot do that okay similarly if uh, you try to create with list let's say list of opportunity here okay and let's say op list to and here if in the SOQL query if you write the query for account let's say you retrieve retrieve value from account okay in that case also or if you add any other data type and if you try to uh, put those values in the list of opportunity opportunity then that is also illegal assignment because you're trying to assign accounts into placeholders meant for opportunity okay okay so that is the concept here okay so the left hand side data type and the right hand side data type should match only then it will be a legal assignment okay so that is why here we have to use opportunity only So here the the SQL query that you are writing that you have to write for opportunity. Okay. Okay. So let's try to see. Uh, let's see how we can do this. Okay. So okay. Let's say we have, we have created a list of opportunity here. Okay, we have a list of opportunity and we want to assign uh, or add some uh, we, we want to retrieve some opportunity list and we want to add it inside the list okay that we have created so how we will do that so what we will do is we will do app op list here equals to and then here we write the sql query let's say we write a sql query as select uh, name uh, then account then we do it's a stage name then we do let's say probability yeah, from opportunity okay and okay let's not put any where condition here and here what we will do is we will do system dot debug and we will uh, pass the list here okay so now if we try to execute this let's see what happens okay uh, no such column account Oops. account id okay let's execute okay so generating a log so when you do system dot debug so this is the list of accounts that it is list of opportunities it has displayed here okay so if you take everything here let's say if you try to put it in a notepad so this is what it will look like okay so here also okay so now it's showing us all the list of opportunities that is there okay Just coming like this. Okay, so whatever the fields that we requested for, those are the fields that we are getting here. Okay, the ID of the account that is connected to, the name of the opportunity, what is the stage here, what is the probability, okay, and what is the ID of the opportunity itself. Okay, so if you want to go to that opportunity, just take this up. And if you go to our org here, duplicate this tab. Okay. So 
so we can go to that opportunity here okay so we want to cross verify so these are directly retrieved from the database okay so this is how a list can be created okay 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 so as you see here in the system.debug you don't have to go for for loop and inside that you have to index each of each box one by one uh, and then you have to display you can also do that that's not an issue but you don't have to do that in order to get the, or display the value of the list okay 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 so let's see what all uh, other options that you get along with the list okay so as of now i have not introduced for loop to you but uh, very widely we'll be using for loop along with a list okay let's say if you want to iterate over this whole the list of or the list of records okay or before doing that uh, let's see let's say uh, as of now you don't know the size of this particular list okay let's just try to display the size as well what is the size system dot debug and what we will do is we'll put op list dot size okay as of now we don't want this so so here it will display you the list of the size or the size of the list okay but here we have not put any limit or anything okay let's say if you put a limit of list equals to then we write the same query okay and here you don't want to retrieve all the records let's say we want to retrieve only uh, 10 records okay so that means a size a list of uh, 10 records will be created and it will be uh, it will be assigned the values of these particular lists okay now so automatically the list is deciding or uh, the list is uh, adjusting the size according to the the data that you throw at it so here you put op list dot size automatically the size will be 10 here okay so it doesn't matter what is the size of the uh, of the list it's adjusting automatically so you don't have to define it explicitly okay now if you execute the highlighted okay we debug so here we have 32 33 opportunities created in our database and we are retrieving only 10 automatically it's adjusting to the 10 okay and the same this is the same list it's not a different list it's the same list okay so that uh, so it will not have any any extra uh, boxes created so whatever is the size of the list that you throw at it whatever the size of the records that you throw at it automatically it will be adjusting according to that okay so it doesn't matter let's say if okay so it doesn't matter what is the size of the data or the what is the amount of the uh, data that you throw and that you are trying to uh, initialize on the list with okay it's adjusting to the size automatically okay okay so that's about list so let's say if you want to uh, loop over all of the records and you want to see them one by one if you want to debug them one by one or maybe if you want to do some adjustments over them okay so for that for this list we have one special kind of for loop provided so which is called for each loop <laughs> okay so usually the normal syntax of for loop is like uh, let's say here you have to declare the integer uh, or maybe some some kind of count okay so that you can keep counting it so let's say integer i equals to we'll put zero and then we have i so here we have to put check some condition what condition should be true so that it will go inside the loop so i is less than let's say uh, op list dot size okay so it will keep on in uh, and then we have to increment the counter here okay so we will do i plus plus okay and whatever the code that you want to uh, run over the loop so that code you have to write inside this okay whatever code you want to write. okay if you want to write some code here you write some logic okay 
so how this will and this loop will work the traditional loop will work so first it uh, just for this loop just uh, just for this for loop it will create one local variable with the name i and that will be of integer data type so it is a counter okay so that it keeps on counting okay what is the value or what is the index as of now and uh, uh, the i will keep on increasing until it reaches the the uh, limit or until it's uh, until it is less than the opportunity list dot size okay so let's say let's say here we have 10 okay so if you uh, use i is less than opportunity list dot size so it will be less than 10 and why we are starting with 0 instead of starting with 1 because the index of the list also starts with 0 okay so as the list starts with 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so the list is like this so that is why our loop is also going through like 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay 5 6 7 8 9 so this is the index of our loop and this is the index of our list if you want you can also go ahead and do that uh, one start from one as well so then it will start from one two three four five six seven eight nine and then after that you have to do ten in order to loop through the entire data so if you do if you add one here instead of zero then you have to make it less than or equals to okay, so that it will loop through the whole uh, list so it will start from 1 and it will go to the 10th box. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So how, what is the sequence of uh, execution here for this for loop? Okay. How does this is, how is it structured? Okay, let me just separate it a little bit so that we'll have some space around to demonstrate. Okay. So in the for loop, first part is initialization. Uh, okay, I don't want to get into the uh, loop as of now. I just wanted to show you that this is the traditional loop and there's another loop which is provided specifically for our collection database or collection API that is called for each loop. So how for each loop is structured? So for each loop, you just define for and in this uh, you need one data, data type or one local variable to hold the uh, hold the data just like uh, hold the counter just like one counter i equals to here so here what you can put uh, let's say you want to display a list of opportunities here okay so here you have to give which is the list that you are going through okay so this is the list that we are going through and here we have to define what is the data type of this particular list the same data type you have to do so here we have to add opportunity here and we need one variable op okay so this is a variable you don't need a counter for this this is the variable or this is the opportunity variable that will be adding or that will be holding each box one by one okay how it is structured let me explain to you like this okay let's our, say our list is new i think no bro no for loop sorry uh, opportunity and uh, that name i mean op and colon mm -hmm. op list space new no 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 it is just op list okay, okay. op list is coming from here because we have already defined one op list now okay okay so this op list is being used okay. okay so which is the list that it is going to iterate through so that is our opportunity list which is already defined okay so it will iterate through that loop okay and what op will contain let's say how it is how it will go actually hmm. so let's say we have a list of 10 boxes or 10 opportunities here so it will be like 10 spaces will be like this so each will have one name will be there id will be there uh, then stage name will be there all those things are here okay all those fields are here okay but it is structured like this in a list we'll have one uh, we'll have 10 opportunities contained here 0 1 2 like this okay so each time the op will con uh, will point to first this then the second time the op will point to this then it will point to this then it will point to this so you don't have to specify the size what is the size of this opportunity automatically it will detect the size and it will go through each of the 
each of the record one by one. Okay, so in this, uh, let's say you come down here, and in this you put one system dot debug, and you add the you just display OPP. Okay, you don't do anything, just display OPP. So if you display OPP, this OPP is holding that particular uh, box. Okay, so if the box was something like this. So currently, the in the first point, the first iteration, the OPP will, the OPP will uh, add or the OPP will point to the first location. Okay, the first point, the OPP will be in the first iteration. The OPP will have this particular box. It will point to this box. In the second, in once this is done, it sees the scope here. Then it comes back here. Okay, so when the scope ends, it comes back to this uh, scope here, and then OPP will point to the second box. Okay, so with the second box, you, you whatever you want to do, you can do. You can manipulate that data inside this, or if you want to display that simply, you can display that. So once that this whatever is code is inside the loop, it is executed, then it will again see that there is the scope ends, then again it will go back to here. When it go back to here, uh, the OPP will point to the third box now. Okay, so just like this, it will go through all these boxes or all these records. So the entire record it will go through. Okay, without even specifying the size. Even if you don't know the size, don't need to worry. Okay, you don't have to specify the size here like this. So the execution of a traditional for loop, how it happens? First, initialization is done. This part is done only once. So this is done only once. Only one time you want to initialize the variable i equals to 1. Every in every loop you don't want to initialize it to one. Then the counter will not increase at all. So the first is this. The first in, will be done initialization. Okay. The second after initialization it will come and it will check what is the condition here. If this condition is true or not. So it is checking i is less than opportunity list dot size, which is 10, which is pointing to this this thing. Okay, so as it says that yes, it is I, uh, the size is less than uh, sorry uh, I is less than the size I is less than 10 so the condition is true so after the condition is true then it comes inside the loop Okay, so once the con it is it has not gone this part as of now <laughs> Okay, so once the integer is initialized this is done only once so after this it will check the condition if this condition is true or not so I is less than our list our uh, list size so that is okay then it comes inside the loop so inside the loop whatever the logic that we have written that logic will be executed once it comes to this scope once it sees that this particular for loop scope is ending then again it jumps back to this counter so here it will increase the i to i i plus plus that means i will be two now so in the starting it was one now the i key value i value will be 2 okay so now again it jumps back to this part okay it will never jump back to the initialization again so this is done initialization is done once okay so once it sees the scope it comes back to the increment it increments the operator here it increments it to 2 then after incrementing it comes back to our condition so now again it checks whether i is less than the size or not i is i's value is 2 and then it che uh, checks that it's less than 10 which is correct again it jumps back inside the loop okay only if this condition is true it will jump inside the loop okay so that is how it is structured okay but for each loop is uh, pretty simple and it is specially designed for the uh, for the collection api Okay, so now if we let's say if we try to execute this, okay, then we let's see what happens. Okay, let's add this here and let's try to execute this. Oh, variable doesn't exist because we have not initialized it, so we will just create one list as well. So we will add this here and from here to here we'll execute and let's see what happens. Let's get back to our developer console. If you see each line is separate, separate. Okay, so these many debug logs are generated separately. So all these debug logs are separate. 
so once the log was generated at this timestamp then next second then next second it was it's coming like this okay so instead of generating just one system to debug it has gone through the whole list one by one okay so this is the use of the for each loops it will it will go through all the records which is there in the list okay 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 so that is the use of the for each for each loop so using for each loop you can go through each of the records one by one and then whatever logic you want to do inside you can also go ahead and do that if you want to manipulate the opportunity uh, let's say you can do opp dot name you want to change the name to something like test and whatever index let's say uh, okay so you want to put something like this and in the end what you do is you update the opp list okay because unless you update the database unless you do dml operation this uh, update will not happen in the it will not reflect in the database okay okay so here if you want to manipulate this or if you want to uh, do anything with the record you can also go ahead and do that you can write whatever logic you want inside this loop okay and each time each time the opportunity value will change <clears throat> i mean this opp value will change first it will point to this the first one then second it will point to the second one then third one then fourth one so on and so forth okay so it will not skip any of the records it will go through the entire 10 records 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so that is how for each loop will work okay okay so what is the main purpose of this collection uh, let's say if you have to do dml operation if you want to update each of the records okay if you want to uh, update the uh, let's say stage name if you want to make all the stage name as let's say if you want to close all the opportunities so if you want to change all the stage names to let's say closed one okay if you want to if you have a requirement something like this uh, that you have to close all the opportunities that you um, retrieve all the 10 opportunities you have to close so when you do close one okay traditionally how you'll do you'll uh, do uh, okay let me show you like this okay traditionally let's say if the collection was not there then you have retrieved you should have retrieved like all the records one by one one by one one by one you should have got all the 10 records and then you have to do one update operation here update okay so and then you want to do one update so update for this then again update for this then this also you have to update so again the fourth one you have to update then fifth one you have to update similarly you so let's say this is just for 10 records if you have to do for it uh, do it for 100 records then you have to do 100 times update okay so this is not even tds it's also exceeding our governor limits governor limits is a limit which is implemented so that we should not misuse or we should not uh, exhaust the resources which is provided because this resource is a shared resource everybody is using the same resource okay so there are some limits like 100 or 150 that you can do at a time so dml on dml operations also there are limits so instead of updating it like 100 times what we are doing what we can do is we can add all these inside a list okay we can all add all these records inside a list and directly we can just update okay update the list so how many dml operations we have done here is just one so here we are doing just one here we are doing 100 dml operations so obviously this is more user friendly and this will hit the database only once and it will update the records only once so even our governor limit is not uh, affected here our governor limit is not uh, is affecting so instead of doing it 100 times we have to put all of those, of those inside a list and then we have to update in the list okay so here also we are not exceeding the limit okay 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 so instead of uh, adding update here let's say update update opp okay 
instead of updating it inside the loop and let's say the op list size is some hundred size let's say if, uh, it's, if it size is hundred okay so it will go through each of the hundred records okay and it will hit the dml uh, hit the database hundred times and it will try to update hundred hundred times so this will hit our governor limit and it will throw an error at the next one after 101 whatever is the limit after the once that limit exceeds it will uh, stop the execution okay just after so instead of uh, adding any dml operations inside the loop what we have to do is we have to add it outside the loop so here if we do update op list the op will not be valid after the loop it is just local for this loop so inside this loop only this variable is uh, available outside the loop that you cannot use so you can just update the opportunity list in the opportunity list it has all the records so all the 100 records it is there in the opportunity list if you update it it will automatically be updated at once so here we are hitting the database only once so here we are doing a dml operation just once and all the records are getting updated so why do you want to do it like 100 times okay so instead of that you can do this so because of this functionality we are using governor uh, we are using collection api here because we are handling bulk data very easily okay so in order to handle those bulk, bulk data we are using collection this is just one example of list in map also you can do that and even in set okay because in salesforce there there will be we will never be dealing with one single data okay one single record most of the times we will be dealing with bulk data and we have to program our code in order to uh, make it compatible for bulk data okay we should be always ready to handle bulk data let's say if somebody is trying to create just one record it should be able to handle the same one record as well and if it's trying to if the user is trying to enter the data from let's say import wizard or maybe data loader okay so if he is using um, some kind of import wizard to add uh, maybe thousand records so your your code should be able to handle that as well so which this particular code can do easily okay so let's say if he is he's trying to add some uh, thousand records also and we are trying to update that one by one so this code will be able to handle that easily and here also the governor limits will not be hit not be affected because only once we are hitting the database and we are only uh, updating only once okay okay so that is how you can use the list and this is called for each loop because it is going through each record one by one so it's called a for each loop okay so this is a for each loop okay and another added uh, bonus to this for each loop you can also use it you don't even have to create a list here okay you can also use it more conveniently like this so let's say if you create one for loop okay and then again uh, you declare what kind of data you want let's say we want some account data so account acc and then you can directly write the query here you can write let's say select a name comma id comma created data whatever from account okay and you don't specify any limit so all the by default it is select all just like sql where you have select star here you don't have to write select star automatically it will be like select all the records so all the records will be in this particular list okay because every time you retrieve a query from the database that will be in form of a list every time it will be list it will be giving you a list so to hold that we need a list so now if you want to go over this particular list you don't even need to specify the list you don't even need to create you don't need, need to put the size of that you don't need to form the for loop like this so it's very simple so you just have to write the query here so all the records will be there in this list because soql query is returning a list by default so you don't need to define a list so here also if you see this is also a list okay this is also a list which is pointing to uh, to this records okay so here we have a list of records and this list is represented by this particular this particular list okay so similarly here also we are putting list so it, it makes no difference it's the same okay but we can also write the query inside this okay and this part is also uh, having a list so 
ACC will one by one go through each of the records that is there in our list and then it will execute one by one. Okay, so the for, for each loop can also work like this. Okay, okay, so let's say inside this what we want to do is we want to do one system dot debug and uh, uh, here you can do ACC simple now if you just execute this for loop you don't even have to execute any list you don't even need to create any list in order to save that data so you just execute the highlighted part and let's see what happens now if you go to our, uh, our debug logs here and we debug this part okay now if you see same result we have got and we don't even need to specify any size what should be the size okay it doesn't even matter it's coming dynamically okay and whatever the fields that we have requested for the field is coming here and uh, it's displaying in the format here okay so here we are just debugging it let's say we want to do some update operation or whatever we want to do with this particular record that we have that also we can do easily so whatever logic we want to do we can do it inside this let's say we want to manipulate the name so we can do uh, ACC because ACC is a pointer ACC is the one which is pointing at each record one by one okay so ACC dot name so first the ACC will be pointing at the first record the second and second time when the loop will be iterating it will point to the second one then it will be pointing to the third one so with ACC we can represent each of the records one by one okay so first ACC will be pointing at this one then if you want to manipulate ACC uh, manip manipulate this one you can change the name here or you want to manipulate ID you cannot do anything you just have to retrieve so if you want to manipulate this then you can go ahead and do that if you want to manipulate the second time the first time it will be selecting this one first one the second time it will be selecting the second one the third time third one similarly it will keep on iterating through all the records one by one one by one one by one okay so ACC will be pointing at each of them one by one okay so ACC is just like a pointer which is pointing to each of the records one by one so using ACC you can point to each of the records one by one first one second one third one fourth one fifth one just like that ACC's value will be changing after each iteration okay so using ACC you can address each of the records okay ACC name equals to whatever you want to do you want to update it maybe static or maybe some dynamic value is coming from somewhere you can also go ahead and do that or maybe if you want to update it according to the account name let's say if you have another loop uh, let's say if you have another list here okay if you put it inside another list <coughs> let's say what we do is okay this is just an example no, it's just an example let's say we can put another loop inside or we can put one for loop inside another for loop okay and uh, in this if you want to change the name of the account name according to the name of the opportunity so here also inside this scope also the value of this op opp is valid so the opp is created for this particular scope from here to here okay so here also you can use opp dot name okay so whatever is the value of opp dot name you can go ahead and insert in inside this okay this kind of condition usually arises in case of uh, opportunity uh, account and contact let's say the contact address is different and uh, the account address is different if you want to update both the addresses uh, as of now let's say this is a uh, let's say contact object so it's representing contact data okay uh, contact and this will be like on list okay just for an example okay let's say you have one list of contacts and one you have a list of accounts so you want to update all the account uh, according to the uh, uh, the address of the contact or vice versa okay then you can go ahead and do that Contact. instead of uh, name you can do the street address so whatever the field is there let's say 
स्ट्रीट स्ट्रीट और इफ इट्स लाइक सिटी ए सी सी डॉट सिटी इक्वल्स टू कॉन डॉट सिटी द फील्ड नेम्स आर डिफरेंट ओके जस्ट फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल आई एम शोइंग इट हियर ओके 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 सो इफ यू कम बैक हियर टू आवर और केयर लेट्स से इफ यू गो टू अकाउंट ओके सो by now we should be knowing that account and contacts is connected by default okay so account contact is the child of account okay if you go to accounts here if you see in the related list we have contacts that means contact is the child and account is the parent okay so in that case the contact in most of the cases the contact and account should have same address so in that case if you want to update both of them so you can use this kind of format and you can update according to one so if you go to the address here each of the field has different mailing street mailing city mailing uh, province mailing mailing uh, country all those things are there in the contact and if you go to account it will be like billing street billing country so billing street billing city billing country like this okay so if you come back to an anonymous window here what you can do is you can do acc. uh billing street here you can do billing city and here you can add mailing city here you can add as mailing street okay then it will be updating all of them one by one once you are done you can just update the list here you can update the op list uh here we have one on list so you can update the con list no we have to do update the our account list so here you can do one update so you can add all of them in one list also and you can update that particular acc list and you can update them okay so this is how you can use of the for each loop which is for list Okay, there are n number of ways. There are numerous other ways also in which you can uh, in our loop in which our for for each loop will come handy and in which we can use the list. Okay, because most of the transactions, more or most of the uh, logic that we have to write, we have to write according to our bulk API only. We have to handle multiple records at a time. So that's why collection is very very important. Okay. 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 so as of now you have any questions any doubts anything you want to add you anything you did not understand regarding the list maybe the for each loop okay okay that's fine so on that note we'll be winding up for today okay so we will be seeing sets and maps tomorrow the next class